this is Candia with Candia Hainsworth Designs and the Sew It and Show It Workshops. Today I'm going to reupholster this sewing box that I got from the thrift store for only five bucks. Here are the supplies I'm going to use. A hot glue gun, glue sticks, a four prong miniature size screwdriver, a scraper, a pair of scissors, the fabric, a tape measurer, and spray adhesive. Let's get started. First, I'm going to remove the hardware from the sewing box. So I'm going to remove the screws here, here, and probably just the two top screws in the hinges on the lid. With the lid removed entirely away from the sewing box, I can now lay the fabric out and get ready to measure it simply by laying the lid onto the fabric. Now I'm going to eyeball this instead of measuring it because it looks pretty straightforward. So I'm just going to cut it around here like so and if you look closely the fabric is just simply tucked under here so I'm going to follow exactly the way the original design was I could pull this thing entirely up but it doesn't seem like it needs to be done that way so I'm just going to lift it up with my scraper after I cut the fabric out to its size so once again I'm just simply going to eyeball this and if I need to trim it down I can do that, but there was no measure in here. So I'm just going to trim it around the rest and the next thing I'm going to do is spray it with the adhesive and begin tucking it under here. I'm going to trim it down just a tad bit more so we can get a nice tight tuck without it uh, being bunched underneath. Now I'm going to use the scraper just to simply lift up the lid. Now I'm not trying to take it off the insert of the lid. I'm not trying to take it off. I just need to be able to get the fabric underneath. See how they had it here? Now that was stapled down and glued. So I'm just going to pretty much mimic what they had going on here by simply gluing it and then gluing it back in place. Well, change of plans here, I decided to take off the inside of the lid and use this as an opportunity to actually do something different with this. Remember, I got this from the thrift store, so it's going to have uh, rips and tears and a lot of imperfections and bruisings and, you know, all kinds of things that used merchandise will have. So, I decided to use this as an opportunity to do something to the inside. Now I'm just pulling this little pin cushion that they had here off and I'm going to use this as a template to cut out new cardboard. Originally the manufacturers of this sewing basket used a staple gun to tack down the fabric and then they applied hot glue and then placed the insert. So I'm going to follow those steps. I have my heavy duty stapler here with the staples to match. But first, what I'm going to do is turn over the pressed fabric and center the lid. Then I'm going to apply some adhesive spray liberally And then 
center it. I'm not going to press because remember I'm going to be pulling the fabric so I don't need to press besides the fact that I don't want the adhesive to bleed through and then I'm just going to start pulling and stapling all the way around like so. While stapling this around it occurred to me that I didn't set out an area for the hinges to be returned into the screw holes that were there. So, before I pull the fabric over, I'm just going to kind of eyeball it, see where the holes are, and then I'm going to use a paper piercer, these little tools, just to pierce a hole in the fabric where the hinges and the screws will be. So I'm going to finger feel it, which is there, and punch a hole. This way, it serves as a guide to where the screws is going to be. And then I'm going to continue to staple this fabric. I also got my handy dandy pink hammer to bang these uh, staples in. I am not the best at stapling or upholstering furniture or fabric. So once again, I'm just uh, reinforcing these holes with this piercer. Love these little handy dandy tools that they have for us crafters. And I'm just going to continue to make sure that the fabric is being pulled and stapled nice and taut. So I wanted to point out how you should upholster or staple fabric. Even though I claim not to be the best, I do know how to do it properly. So basically, I'm halfway complete, and it is coming out nice and taut the way I wanted it to. It looks very professional, very clean lines, and very even. However, the way this should be done is instead of going all the way around like you would think you would do it, you really should do it from side to side. So I started out with this side, and I really should have jumped to this side, but the reason why I didn't do that is because these have the hinges that I'm going to be piercing. So I jumped to this side, and instead of continuing all the way around, I'm going to come here. So this way, the fabric is pulled nice and even. Okay, so I've completed stapling the fabric all the way around as so, and it came out very professional looking once again, very nice, clean lines, um, even. And I've also pierced the fabric where the hinge is going to be replaced or go back to where it was at. And um, I'm ready now to draw an outline using the template that was on the inside of the lid. So, to do that, I'm going to set the lid aside, and I'm going to use chipboard. This is a heavy-duty cardstock that have several layers of craft paper compressed together. So, I'm going to use this, and this is actually more durable than the original. Just going to... Uh, Make sure that it can fit, and it is. I have some good coverage. And just take a Sharpie or a pen and trace it out. Okay, so I've selected this uh, turquoise batik fabric, 
and uh, it's a piece of scrap fabric that I had left over so this is perfect for a project like the one that I'm doing and I'm just going to apply the uh, spray adhesive I applied a nice amount not too liberally but not too light because I really want this to stick and I'm just gently patting it not pressing it uh, because I don't want it to uh, bleed through and I'm going to now trim along the outline of uh, this cardboard just so we can have the nice shape for it so we can press the fabric over the edges okay we're coming along so I've trimmed it so now because these are the the curved corners I'm just going to put a couple of slits in there so it'll be a little bit easier to turn the corners over when it's time and then I'm going to spray the outline of the cardboard with the spray adhesive and then fold the fabric over and then we'll be ready to hot glue this insert of the lid to the reverse side of the top for the sewing box. So I folded the fabric nice and taut over the cardboard and it fits very nicely and I'm just making sure that it can fit inside of the lid for the sewing box and it does but I think that I want to reuse some of the items that were attachments that is that were on the original insert so remember we had this squishy uh, stick pin cushion so I'm gonna put it there and I'm going to cut out this pocket and attempt to adhere it here now I might have to put a couple of stitches here and maybe run some stitches around here but I want to do whatever I can to salvage this pocket and this here I think maybe I'm going to fold it over in a hemline and put a stitch there and some way somehow fold this over in a hemline and run a stitch there but I just have to take some more of the cardboard box because the cardboard off of it because it's very boxy and uh, I can't run it like this through the machine it would just be too thick because remember this is cardboard